dive into the depth of theology with Article 18 of the Gospel Standard Articles of Faith. This article, in its entirety, states, We reject as blasphemous the doctrine of baptismal regeneration, that is, that the person baptized is or can be regenerated in, by or through baptism, much less, if possible, by infant sprinkling. In essence, Article 18 is a categorical refutation of the belief that spiritual rebirth can be achieved through the act of baptism, and more so, through the sprinkling of infants. Throughout this video, we will explore the theological implications of this article, its roots, and its impact on the faith. We will also delve into the Bible, specifically John 1.13 and 1 Peter 1.23, to provide robust biblical support to the assertions made in Article 18. So brace yourselves for an enlightening journey into the heart of theology. Now that we've set the stage, it's time to dissect Article 18's theological implications. Article 18 rejects a particular doctrine, baptismal regeneration. But what does this mean? Well, to start, let's dissect the term baptismal regeneration. It's a doctrine that suggests that baptism is necessary for spiritual regeneration, essentially saying that the act of baptism itself instigates a spiritual rebirth. However, Article 18 of the Gospel Standard Articles of Faith dismisses this doctrine as blasphemous. It firmly states that a person cannot be regenerated, that is, spiritually reborn, in, by, or through baptism. The article emphasizes that the spiritual rebirth is not mechanically triggered by the physical act of baptism. Spiritual birth is clearly an act of God alone and is not tied to anything we do physically. Now you might be wondering about the phrase, infant sprinkling, used in the article. This is a reference to the practice of baptizing infants by sprinkling water on them, a common tradition in some Christian denominations. See our video on Article 17 for an in-depth analysis on infant baptism. The phrase infant sprinkling, therefore, is a metaphorical representation of the wider issue, the belief that baptism, in any form or at any age, can cause spiritual regeneration. The Gospel Standard Articles of Faith through Article 18 takes a stand against this false belief. It asserts that the act of baptism, whether it be full immersion or a simple sprinkling of water, does not hold the power to cleanse the soul or induce spiritual rebirth. God alone has this power and it is directly through the death of Jesus Christ on the cross and the shedding of his blood whereby sinners are saved and spiritual birth happens. This is especially emphasized in the case of infants where the idea of spiritual regeneration through baptism is deemed even more contentious due to the child's lack of personal faith or understanding of the act. Regeneration by the Holy Spirit or spiritual baptism is what allows us to understand the gospel of Christ. This personal faith given by God then leads us to follow Jesus in baptism as a public testimony of our spiritual reality. The water has no power. So, in essence, Article 18 is a clear rejection of the doctrine of baptismal regeneration. It underscores the belief that spiritual regeneration is not a byproduct of a physical act, but a profound, personal, transformative experience that goes beyond the ritualistic and enters the realm of the spiritual. Being born again is therefore an act of God through his sovereign decree for those chosen by God from eternity. We've dissected the doctrine of baptismal regeneration and its rejection in Article 18. Now let's explore the biblical support for this stance. The Bible, our guiding light, provides support for Article 18's stance. Let's begin with John 1.13, which says, Who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. This scripture underscores that regeneration is not a human act, but an act of God. It's not achieved through baptism, but by God's sovereign will. God's electing decree from eternity is the ultimate cause of our eventual regeneration through granting faith in Christ's sacrificial death. It's quite clear that Article 18 is in alignment with Scripture, which rejects the doctrine of baptismal regeneration. Next, we turn our attention to 1 Peter 1.23. Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding Word of God. This scripture underscores the idea that regeneration is not a physical act, but a spiritual one. It's not brought about by water baptism, but by the incorruptible word of God. Again, Article 18 perfectly aligns with the word of God. The baptismal waters clearly have no power to regenerate anything, 
they are merely a public profession of faith in Christ. In essence, these scriptures contribute to the theological understanding of baptism as a symbolic act of obedience and public confession of faith, not a means of salvation or regeneration. They reinforce the notion that regeneration is a work of God's grace and power, not a human ritual. With the scriptures as our guide, we've illuminated the theological stance of Article 18. But what does this all mean in summary? Article 18, a rejection of baptismal regeneration, holds profound theological implications. Its core message disputes the notion that baptism alone can lead to spiritual rebirth. Instead, it emphasizes the role of personal faith and divine grace. We've seen this through biblical passages like John 1.13 and 1 Peter 1.23, which underscore that spiritual regeneration is not birthed from human will, but from God. As we conclude, remember that theology invites us to continually explore and question our understanding. Until next time, keep pondering the doctrines of God and how they affect our faith.